So official welcome everyone and thank you for joining our Coffee Corner meetup. I am Lena, part of the SAP community team and I'm super excited to have such a Coffee Corner meetup again. It's been a while and we have a very, very special theme, namely our origami. Um, you all know that we started an origami challenge in the SAP community uh, roughly a week ago, October 27th, which will last until November 17th, mid of SAP Tech It in 2021. The challenge is really to get creative. We want to see your designs, your models, your um, yeah, your your folded paper work, and we want to give you some support. And we have a super special guest here, and I'm super happy that Paul Jackson joined us. <laughs> He's a professional paper artist. This sounds so cool, doesn't it? He's not only a paper artist. It sounds cool, Paul. Yes. <laughs> But it's also he's also a paper engineer because he really like he reinvents um, processes and techniques of folding. He's also a writer. He wrote over 40 books in his career already. Not all of them are displayed in the background, but some of them are displayed in the background. Um, and he's a teacher. So he teaches at the Schenker College of Design and Art in Tel Aviv in different departments. Um, he uh, travels around the world and gives courses for um, his techniques of folding origami, folding paper, and um, he really did great, great stuff in the past, or currently he's also doing great stuff. So please check out his website, I'll post it in the chat in a sec. Um, he designs dresses and skirts, I'm really jealous, I would love to wear them all. <laughs> um, but we will also, like, in the next 60 minutes, learn from him. He'll give us an introduction really on the phenomenon of folding. We'll um, learn to models, but more like the techniques. Um, so he'll give us hints and, and ways of thinking of our own designs really. So we won't fold our own bird or cat or dog, but he will show us how we can come up with really, really cool designs that you guys can then use for our origami challenge. Um, then, of course, he will give us more insights into like the um, origami art and science, and there should be some time towards the end um, of the call to address questions. And I don't want to take more time from you, Paul. I'll hand over and I'm very happy that you joined us today. Good. Thank you, Lena. And hello, everybody. Yes. Um, don't I sound interesting? <laughs> I just do a job. <laughs> it's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. Um, yes, it's been my living for 38 years. I was the first person in Europe, maybe even outside Japan, nobody's quite sure, to make a living with origami. And in that time, of course, I've done many, many things, um, traveled to many places and done all kinds of interesting and not so interesting work. So today, what I'm going to show you, because you have this challenge, is um, not how to make cats and dogs, as Lena was saying, because you know, it's, it's just something you can learn from YouTube or from books. What I'm going to show you is a technique that you can learn. And this is being recorded so you can play back the recording if you forget how to do it. That's a tip. Um, so you learn the technique and then I'll show you ways that you can play with this technique to create all kinds of forms and surfaces that you can photograph and use in interesting ways or turn into little products that you can you know, submit as part of the challenge. So if you're expecting to make a dragon because you like dragons, then I'm afraid that's for YouTube or for books. Um, instead, I'm going to teach you a technique. Now I'm going to use yellow um, just because I'm special. In fact, I've realized it's flaring with the lights, but never mind. Um, so two A4 sheets are what you need. And you will need some kind of pen or pencil or something you can just make one or two lines with. Um, so, OK, if you if you just organize the space in front of your camera, like a flat space, if you're sat at a desk, just push your keyboard forwards or left or right. So you have a space where you can work a nice hard flat space where you can put the paper. If you're kind of sitting on a chair, if you can find maybe a hard back book or um, just a hard surface to work on, um, it makes it so much easier and more pleasurable as well. 
So we'll spend, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes doing this. And then I've got some slides to show you, probably way too many. So I'll gallop um, through those slides. And if you have any energy left at the end, then you can ask me a few questions and I'll try to give um, some answers. Um, okay, so I need to move the camera because I've just got the one camera here. It's on my monitor. So just give me um, 30 seconds. This is my high tech garden cane, 50 euros. And this is my camera moving. Okay, everybody gets seasick. Um, and then put it here and move the, this around. Um, do I need this on? Turn that off. Um, okay, so I've got a light that's over here. It gives me shadows. Um, so without shadows, it's very difficult to fold. If your light is coming from the top, you might have a problem to see the shadows. So you might want to kind of move the light or move yourself a little bit so you can make some shadows. Now, we need to make a square. So what I want to do is this. The usual way, don't do anything, don't, don't do anything, is to make a triangle and then cut it. But we're not doing that. What we're doing instead is putting one A4 lengthwise and the other A4 there up against it like that. Can you see here? And then I'm going to um, just mark there with a the pencil here. Can you see that? That's the length of the short side, isn't it? And then I mark with the pencil. Now, if I go too fast, you can replay the video, okay? So that's going to be where my square starts from. Then, and then I find it easier to turn the pencil to the back, turn the pencil to the back, and then pull the paper forwards and, oh, there it is, hello. So there's the line and you can make a fold, a nice, strong fold. Now we're going to do the hardest part, which is to tear, I said tear, the paper. So you do that by folding backwards, make this edge very weak and just keep, go on, be nasty to it. Horrible paper, turn it this way. And then when you've done that, you know, three or four times, just make a little tear, just, just a few millimeters and you should be able, look at it, wow, what an artist, fantastic, perfect. <clears throat> 38 years work wasted. Okay, so maybe I just need to move this back a little bit because I'm too far away, there we go, yes, that's better. Okay, square. Now, there are two kinds of folds that we're going to make, valley folds and mountain folds, valleys and mountains. Now we start by folding edge to edge carefully and open. That's a valley fold, valley. Turned over, it's a mountain. It's the same fold, but it's called a mountain. Valley, mountain. So we're making valley folds at the moment. Half and now quarters. So one quarter here, turn the paper round. I always fold away from myself because I just find it easier. I can see what I'm doing. So I can see my shadows, I can see the edges. So, uh, so I'm always, always turning my paper. Half and quarter. What lovely shadows we have. Half and quarter. And then we're going to divide again into eight. How do we do that? So we're going to divide into eight and we do that by folding the edge to the top fold. The edge to the top fold. Edge to the top fold. That's the quarter, isn't it? And make a fold and open. So this is the new fold here in the middle of the three. This is my new fold. And then I spin the paper round, so turn the paper round, and I do the same thing again. The edge near me goes to the top fold. Edge 
more me goes to the top fold. And we open out. So we have these five folds in the middle of the paper. And you can probably guess what we're going to do to finish the eighths. We need a fold here near the edge, don't we? Something near the bottom and also something near the top. So near the bottom, we fold the edge now to the nearest fold. First we folded to the furthest fold and now we're folding to the nearest. So that one and open, spin the paper round and to this bottom fold. So that's a nice easy way to divide into eight. And they're all valleys. Actually it's not eight valleys, it's seven valleys if you look. Seven valleys dividing the paper into eight. Now, haha, this is the part somebody always forgets. Somebody always forgets. And then they're really sorry. They're really, really, really sorry. These are all valley folds. So the one time in all the folding we do, you turn over. They are now mountains. Mountains. Oh, isn't that pretty? Look at that. Mountains. M mountains, M -m mountains, mountains. So you started making valley folds and then one time only we turned the paper over to make mountains. Please don't forget to do that or you'll be very sorry. So what we're going to do now is to make a big triangle corner to corner. And this is a valley fold that goes across all the mountains, yes? So we're now going to make more valleys, lots of X's, and they're crossing the old mountains that we made before. So this is big triangle open, turn the paper, and we can fold the other big triangle that goes across the first one. So corner to corner, and that's a big, big X, isn't it? Big X biggest you can make. Then we fold the four corners one at a time to the center point, making more valleys. So corner to the center point, turn the paper a bit. Next one. Then number three. What are we making? It doesn't look like anything I've ever made. What are we making? What are we doing? What's this lunatic doing? That actually looks rather good, doesn't it? Just the shadows on that. Doesn't that look beautiful? Wow. You didn't know you were a designer, did you? <laughs> <coughs> okay. <clears throat> so what we're going to do now, <clears throat> excuse me, is we're going to fold the corner, corner at the bottom, like we did before to the furthest fold. Well, it's this one up here, isn't it? This, this is our furthest fold from the bottom corner. So the bottom corner goes and touches this junction here where everything crosses because that's where this line goes across. Okay, bottom corner up to that furthest fold and we make a fold. And guess what we're going to do? Guess what? Yeah, yeah, you've got it. We're going to do the same with all the corners. So do one, <clears throat> open it, turn to the next corner, look at where <clears throat> look at where your line is that's crossing. Fold the bottom corner to that same line. Lots of symmetry here, isn't there? And you know, doing the same thing many times. Not many steps. We just do the same thing many times. And then a third one. So you see this grid that's building up. And then to the top, goes across. Now the nice thing about paper is that if you make a mistake, you don't get all upset and cry and go and tell your mummy. What you do is you just start again. You know, just a piece of paper, it's not expensive, doesn't take you long, just start again. So, 
that, oh wow, frame it, quick screen grab. There we go. Quite nice, isn't it? All right, now we need to um, finish the grid by folding a corner to the nearest line. So first we fold it to the furthest line. Now we're folding to the nearest line just to make this little triangle in the corner. You see that triangle? Just a little triangle. And then we turn, fold again to the nearest line that goes across. So that's our little baby valley. Four times. And we finished. Huh? Not interested. What's that? What's this? What's he made? So we have a regular grid of mountains and valleys. It looks like cut glass, doesn't it? You know, a sort of wine glass or something that looks a bit like this. Um, this is what we've got. A kind of a cut glass effect made with mountains and valleys. And in my opinion, it's rather beautiful. In my opinion, I mean, you know, maybe you think something else, but I think this looks already very aesthetic. And, and we like to do and make beautiful things, don't we? <laughs> well, I do anyway. Okay, so we have this. Now, this is finished, but I want to show you what you can do with this because just that isn't very much, is it? So we finished folding, we turned over once in the middle, if you remember, but now we turn over again at the end of the folding, turn over, and it probably lifts into a kind of arch shape. It's not flat. It will come up a little bit, I think, off the table. Now, here's something important. Every one of these junctions, and there are many of them, every one of them, everyone has to pop upwards. Now this middle one goes down. Can you see? That's wrong. So I have to get inside and pop it, just, just pop, pop it upwards. And I have to do that with every junction. There are many of them. So just go around, oh, that's another one, and pop it, pop, just pop, pop, pop. So now you can see with the shadows that they're all popped. And then when they're all popped, can you see that my first lines, the parallel lines, the valley lines go across this way. So I put my hands on the two, two ends of those lines and I push a little bit and it makes a more three dimensional arch. You see that? Wow. So it makes a very stable three-dimensional arch. Um, in fact, many kind of truss systems for roofs follow this particular pattern, uh, but they use metal tubes rather than folded paper, but it's the same system. Okay, so on the inside, it looks like that, and you can turn it over and this is, this is the basic form that this will pop. Now, just to emphasize again that any, at any junction, let's say this one, if it goes in, uh, can you see the pattern isn't working anymore? So this junction has to be popped up from the back, pop. So any of those that you have, I don't have any now, but any that you have, just put your fingers underneath and pop and then you can you know bend it round i think that's really very beautiful very interesting shape you know the engineering aspect of that uh, the art and design aspect of that i think is rich with possibilities there are many things you can do with this so let's have a look at what some of those might be so this is the basic form but what can we do with it? How can we use this so that when you make something for the challenge, you're not just making this? Well, actually, you could just make this. And what you could do is to get very low with a camera and photograph it like it's a piece of architecture. Yeah. 
you know, just imagine that's your camera viewpoint. So it becomes a piece of architecture. And then you need to get the light in the right place to see the light and the dark. So it looks three dimensional. So that's one way, just a very simple way that you could photograph it. You could even look that all the way through, couldn't you? Um, so one of the variations is this, that if you just turn it over to the side here, you can actually overlap, that this will overlap into a three-sided end. Just really squeeze it. Um, so it makes a kind of stick. I've got one here that I made before. So this is the same thing there that's now glued. So it can make something like this. You see that's a closed tube with glue. Um, so it could be longer, it could be shorter. It doesn't have to be this length. You can cut it in half. You can make another one and join it on the end. You can make it any length, can't you? Because you just cut it or grow it as you want. So there's no fixed length for it. This is just what we made, you know, from a square. Um, so, um, so you could overlap it. Um, something else you can do is this. Uh, so I'm going to open mine flat. Can you see that this is the mountain in the middle here on the inside? So you could cut that. I think I've got one of those as well. So where is it? Yeah. So this has been cut, cut in the middle to make two halves, two halves. And then, and then each of these can fold around and you can overlap them. Or what you could also do is join them end to end. They're like this. You see, you need some um, tape, some sticky tape and just join them. So this would make a big, can you imagine that this would make a big kind of cylinder, wouldn't it? Um, joining the two halves this way. And then in the light, that would also look um, very beautiful. What you could also do, maybe I do it just to show you, is this is one of the halves. <clears throat> so I've got three mountains that go across. I can fold oh, there into the middle and also this into the middle. Don't forget that this is being recorded. So if it's way too quick or way too many ideas, then you can just play it back and you know, absorb it. So this is a piece of sticky tape and I can put that across and fold over the ends just to keep it neat. Now these folds I made, there, they're false folds. I don't need to keep them. So I can just pop out those folds. I don't need them. Just go around and pop it, pop it, pop it. So I've made something like that, you see? And that has a square end, or when you look down, it, it's actually eight sides. And, and so it's an octagon. Um, four sides at the top and four at the bottom. And if you want, you can put another one of those on the end. So you can cut smaller to make something that's a different shape and then tape or maybe glue together. This is four sides, this is three sides that I did before. But it's the same thing. You have to fold over the end, don't they? It's okay. <laughs> right. um, um, so what else you can do is this, that that even one of these halves here, you can cut this in half. So it's only a quarter that we have, and this is it. This is what happens when you cut six of the eights off and just leaves you this. So again, this makes an arch, but it's a very narrow arch, you know, that you can go through, or you can put another one on the other half or you can wind it right up as the like we did before. So it's only three sides, three sides, or you can do what we did before and you can glue it or uh, sorry, tape it. So it's four sides with a square profile. So and then again, you know, it's almost like a bangle or something, isn't it? That you can make jewelry and things this way, or I don't know. 
um, doesn't have to be paper, does it? You can fold something else or you can use colors or patterns or I don't know, uh, just print something and fold that, you know, messages or some graphics or something that you make. Um, so that's, that's one way that we can cut it by, by starting with this is the, uh, that's the main sheet and then uh, folding in half. The fold is already there and then cutting on that fold or cutting a quarter or cutting, well, maybe not one eighth, maybe that's not, <laughs> not so interesting. Um, or you can just glue another one on the end or tape another one on the end. Um, if you want, you can put four side by side, one, two, three, four in a big grid. So you've got a lot of these little triangles to play with. So you can grow it like copy paste, or you can cut it smaller. Okay, now we can also cut it this way. So we're going across that all these valley folds that divide into eight, you can cut it this way, not just that way, which I've shown you, cut it across as well. And this is what you get. So this is two of those. These are the two halves here. So get rid of the big one. And this is what you get, um, something like that. Now these also will fold up, but something very extraordinary happens that if you push and push and keep pushing it tighter and tighter, every single, every single valley and mountain will fold. Every one, every one will fold up, every single one, and it will fold flat. Takes a few seconds, okay, but it's gone flat. Wow, look at that. You see, it's tiny, isn't it? Look at that. Isn't that amazing? That this <laughs> makes that, uh, <laughs> that, will, uh, that will open out and stretch. You see? So you can do the same with this one. Um, just try and do it a bit quicker. Just fold every mountain, every valley, push it together. Oops. The faster you try and do it, the slower you do it, you know. Less haste, more speed. Okay, so we've got that, which is another one of the first ones. So actually you can put these together. You can, you know, glue the ends together. Just, just glue or tape the ends together. You see it continues that the pattern continues. So you can make this as long as you like. I actually make chains for Christmas trees this way. Just make really long ones and then just push them flat and you know just let them open. Um, <laughs> so you can make very long kind of snaky things this way. Or you can even bend them round in a circle. Two isn't quite enough. You need you know three or four to bend them round in a circle. Um, looks like it works with two, but it doesn't quite. But they will go around in a circle to make a kind of star. Um, okay, so we've cut cut down the middle um, to make halves. And I've got one here. This is one of the halves that we've just that we've just played with. This can also cut in half to cut down the middle, and this is what we get. So that we'll make two of these. This will make these two. So now we have some mountains and valleys that will fold up in a very simple way to make a triangle. And that will do the same to make a triangle. And then again, if you join them together, it's a simple join. Um, it's a bit difficult to demonstrate, but I don't know if I can do this kind of easily without looking a fool. Uh, but uh, they'll bend around and make a star and um, something like that. So they'll kind of bend around and make something more in, in, um, um, star-like, see? So there are lots and lots of things you can make with this basic square pattern here, this pattern. 
So you need to think what it is you want to make. Do you want to make something that's just aesthetic? Do you want to make something practical? Do you want to make something with white or a color or a pattern or, um, I don't know. So this is where the challenge is. The challenge is, hey, I can make a dragon with all the toes. Ooh, I'm the winner. You know, it's not, that's not the challenge. The challenge is to be creative with this technique because it makes everybody equal if you like you know it's not just one for the origami experts this is a technique where you need to be creative with the technique so everybody has the same chance um what's worth remembering is that, uh, that if you if you send a photo the photo uh, 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 there has to be beautiful yes not just the idea but the photograph so think how I think how you light it and the camera angle, use the filters on your phones. They're very good. They're very useful. I do it a lot and my students use um, their filters a lot when they photograph their work. It really makes something ordinary look good. So that's what I want to teach you quite quickly. Um, so I think I'll stop there. If I was too quick and I'm sure I was, then you can always, I'll move the camera, um, and then you can always just play it again. Turn my light back on, go over here. Get rid of my garden cane. Yeah, so you can always replay the video um, and just see how things were made. And even the simple things, if you think of a nice idea and you take a good photograph, well, who knows what your chances might be doesn't have to be the cleverest, does it? It has to be something creative, you know? And so creative doesn't always equal clever, yes? Um, so, okay, that was that. Um, to move on to my quick, I think I've got way too many slides. So I'm gonna screen share, so I can do that. Yes, I can. Um, go to my, is that my, Uh, just yes okay here i am and i'll go full screen um okay so just a quick run through all this um okay origami and folding this is a very nice kind of diagram again i'll have to run through this but if you but if you're interested it's very instructive it's 45 years old 1976 so pure origami just a square of paper there is in the middle, and then, you can, and then you can go down these lines. So for example, to the left, you can have two color paper, and then further out is patterned paper, and further out you're painting the paper. So origami is a very simple art form where you can complicate it in eight, or perhaps even more, you know, different ways to take yourself to other art forms. Um, so it's kind of the hub of many creative activities. It's a very interesting drawing, this diagram, that I recommend, if you have an interest, you study a little bit. It just shows how origami relates to many other arts and crafts and creative activities. Um, okay, its origins in Japan are very obscure. Um, are the earliest references just go back 250 years. It's not, well, everyone says it's ancient and maybe it is, but there is no documentary proof of this. This is the best known fold. Um, um, it's the crane. Perhaps you've seen these thousand cranes that people make as a kind of good luck thing or a wish fulfillment thing. Um, we've made quite a lot ourselves here in Israel. Um, this is a famous print by Hokusai. If you know the wave, you know, the big wave um, falling over Mount Fuji is the same artist. Um, also Noshi, uh, these are folded tokens that have a lot of symbolism. They're very common in Japanese culture. And even, this was just from the dollar store in Tokyo, they even print the Noshi on there. <laughs> Quite sweet. Um, as, as kusudamas as well, they used to be herb balls and then they began to be made in paper 
So this is a typical you know, ancient or old Japanese sort of kusudama from six pieces. The traditional models are quite simple and stylized, but geometrically, I think, very beautiful. I really like them for all their simplicity. This is by the, uh, the modern master Yoshizawa, who really revolutionized origami. It was a creative backwater and, um, until in the 1940s and 50s, he began to create his own pieces and he became a real kind of legend of the art. Without Yoshizawa, perhaps there would be no worldwide art today. So these are his pieces, very beautiful, full of character, a really amazing folding. This is him. I think this was, I think it was published after he died. So I was lucky to meet him five or six times. Okay, origins in Europe. Actually, this is quite surprising to many people. Um, the, the, uh, the earliest reference goes back to 1440, which is much older than anything we have from the Far East. If you look at the image on the left and at the bottom, there are some boxes. They're in red and they're open. They're in green. And then look at the top right of the slide. Uh, so the green is the open box. And then the photograph is the box itself. So astonishingly, uh, the earliest references in Europe are much earlier than in Japan. It, but don't tell the Japanese. Um, 1490, so is the boat there in the woodcut an origami boat or a real boat? Well, real boats don't look like that. So we think it's an origami boat. Although nobody called it origami in 1490. This is in Europe. Um, the Spanish have a very old design um, of the parajita, the little sparrow bird. This is a very traditional part of um, Spanish culture. In the 17th century, people were folding cloth at feasts and banquets in the royal courts of Europe um, to make very, very intricate designs. And somebody recently has been recreating these and they were quite astonishing, quite astonishing. Not paper, they were cloth, but it's folded <clears throat> using starch to stiffen the cloth. Really amazing. This is 18th century. These are German. This was a a sort of German um, toy that the children would make of knights on horseback. This is 1810. Now this is supposed to be a Chinese design at the bottom, but somehow it was known in Europe, possibly the Silk Road. This is the theory of how Europe you know, came to understand about all this. And the mid 19th century, uh, Friedrich Froebel, I have to excuse my German pronunciation, um, he was the person who kind of created the kindergarten system. And he used to teach Papierfalten as one of his gifts, the 20 gifts of the Froebelian system. Uh, so this is what the seven year olds were making in his system. So this was very well known. Um, certainly in Central Europe in the middle of the 19th century. This is Unamuno, who's a famous Spanish philosopher, and there's a little bird. He used to create these birds, not copy them, create them. Contemporary. Okay, start with one fold. So this is one of my you know, very simple pieces. Just one fold on a sheet. He said, she said, another of my simple pieces. So there's a kind of dialogue here. What can you do with one fold? Well, maybe something like this. Contemporary. Yeah, I, I mean, you can make astonishing things. Uh, so this is um, just one sheet of paper, no cutting, no cutting, no gluing, um, just you know, pure folding. And these days, it really is extraordinary what you can make doesn't mean they're better than the simple things. It's just a different style, isn't it? Just because you paint a picture with every you know, piece of grass you know, painted in, 
doesn't mean it's a better picture than a picture where the grass is just a wash of green. So single squares only folded. It doesn't look it, does it? But uh, these are single squares just folded. Take hours and hours and hours and hours of work to make. Um, but it's possible also to scan any three-dimensional object um, and then to create a crease pattern, a folding pattern of the surface of that three-dimensional object to any resolution. So this is a bunny that was scanned in three dimensions and then the crease pattern is on the right. So that nightmare that's on the right will actually fold up and make the rabbit. So theoretically, you can make anything by folding. Now, whether it looks beautiful, whether anybody wants to make it is another you know, discussion, isn't it? But you can do this modular. So many pieces put together, many pieces. This is quite popular because you spend a few hours making units and then you glue them together in various ways. This is a thousand separate units. Um, yeah, that's one of mine. I got fed up making things that were perfect. So I made a modular cube with no strength. So it just collapsed. <laughs> that's me, you know, oh, the artist being an artist. Oh dear. Tessellations. Um, so these are repeats. You see the grid bottom left. So you make a grid and then you select and collapse. And there are thousands of these designs now. So it's a little bit like knitting or weaving where you spend a long time, you know, making the grid. And then there are various systems and formulas and methods for, uh, for collapsing, you know, polygons. Um, some of them are very beautiful. Some of them to me look a bit just you know, being complicated for the sake of being complicated, but that's just my opinion. Um, this is rather lovely. So yes, there are many, many of these designs now. Pleats, which means a zigzag, you know, up and down pleats. Similar to tessellations, I guess. You know, you make a grid and then you select and reject. Many, many of these again. Rather interesting. So it's kind of theme and variation. It's a game, isn't it? You know, the rules are that, uh, are that you don't cut. And when you have something very restrictive like that, it's a game like, you know, chess or football or something. You have the rules that you follow and then the game evolves from that. These are flat pleats. They're kind of spiral pleats with a light at the back. Beautiful, aren't they? This is one of my pieces with um, pastel. Again, pleating. And that's also one of my pieces with pastel. Crumpling. Crumpling? But actually, this is fascinating because if you crumple and then open, the paper becomes like rubber, like elastic, and you can stretch it. Once it's crumpled, you can stretch it in really amazing ways. Really quite an extraordinary kind of technique. This guy, Vincent Flaudre, he's French, has done a lot of work with crumpling. Though he'll be the first to tell you that I taught him the technique but you know I have the technique but he is the artist he's uh, spent you know 25 years doing all these they're really remarkable now, this is his work so one square that's crumpled and then stretched open in geometric patterns very remarkable work and I think very profound I think there's a lot here to really study the mathematics of this are fascinating yeah, that's one of his pieces. 
okay, miscellaneous, all kinds of stuff. This is um, it's something my wife did. My wife is also an origami artist. Um, she's an Israeli. And when we married, I decided you know, to leave England and come and live in Israel. Well, the weather's nice. Um, so uh, this is her piece called People of the Books. So if you can see, they're, they're little people cut from the books. Um, they're supposed to be holy books, but there's no writing in them, no text. Um, this is by a, in fact, by a German artist, Heinz Strobel. It's one long strip of paper that's folded backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. One strip. Similar. One strip, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Some spirally, twisty thingies, just beautiful things and more three-dimensional. This was actually at the bar house. Um, I guess you know the bar house. Don't need to explain. This is an origami exhibition at the bar house. This is an installation that uh, some artist made of um, uh, a sort of half finished folding. This was in Thailand. Can you see the people? There's one province in Thailand that has a majority Muslim population. The rest of Thailand is Buddhist and the Muslims were having a hard time. And so the king of Thailand, I think the king or the prime minister or somebody, asked the people of Thailand to make origami cranes. So they did as a kind of show of support and you know, solidarity with the, um, uh, the Muslim um, people. And they made a hundred million and then they were dropped by airplane that on the province that was Muslim and everybody hated it because there were, you know, a hundred million pieces of rubbish on the floor. <laughs> this is an exhibition we did in a mall. It's about two meters tall, big origami. Um, applications. Yeah, this is for my students. Um, so the pattern on the left makes the dress on the right. So you steam the fabrics or you stitch them many applications in fashion design with um, um, fabric. This is crumpling and then some crumpled polyester, um, just regular pleating. This is jewellery that can make many different shapes. Turn it upside down. This is tin, you know, metal tin that's been anodized. Um, this is crumpled again as a light fitting this is a bag. You see the corner of the folding is the corner of the bag. So the bag collapses flat and you can pull it open. So this is all student work. This is not. This is a scarf you can buy in a shop somewhere, museum shop. And so is that. Yours for $200 from Mama in New York. Shoes. Folding is a very common language in design now. You see these bags that fold flat? Folding makes things smaller. You can really um, you know, expand and collapse. This is one of my students who did this. It, just pure decoration, yeah? No function, just purely decorative. This is Yves Saint Laurent. Yves Saint Laurent does origami? Well, apparently he did. This is, um, it's a wall piece in a hotel that somebody did. Just lots of little boats, if you can see. This is a cutting board for bread or vegetables. You see how it changes shape? It's nice, isn't it? This is ceramic, cast ceramic. And again, cast ceramic. This is bronze, cast bronze painted white. Beautiful piece of origami cast in bronze. This is a chair that's been folded. Can you see how it would unfold? Again, ceramic made in a mold. This is one of my students who made this uh, neckerchief. 
uh, is again one of my students. Uh, this is knitting on a knitting machine. <laughs> left, right, left, right. Um, this is a dance performance with a piece of folded cloth that kept changing shape as the dancers moved. One of my students did this, you see, just very simple folding, but beautifully done, beautifully, beautifully done. It's not clever, it's just wonderful design. Technically simple, but beautifully done. Folded paper, just a lovely piece. This is a light fitting. There are many, many, you know, folded and pleated lights. You've probably seen some. This was an installation in a shop. This is in central London. It's um, steel. It's near St. Paul's Cathedral, Paternoster Square. It's my favourite piece of public sculpture. It looks amazing in any light. It's beautiful. Table changes shape. Lamps change shape. Science and math. This is a stent. This is a tiny, tiny thing that goes into a blood vessel and travels along. You guide it with a magnet. <clears throat> and then you do something, I don't know what, and this small thing at the bottom opens to the big tube. So it opens an artery so blood can go through. These are now used quite a lot. It's an origami idea. It's pure origami. Saved many, many lives. This is a little robot. Um, many university engineering departments are now making these folding robots that kind of move themselves. This one apparently swims. This is um, something NASA, I think, is doing with um, the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. It's a big telescope that folds very small. In fact, I've done some work for space, space companies before, but I can't tell you what. Um, are making things that are small and then you know, open, they deploy once they're in orbit. And this is a big telescope that was designed by this guy, Robert Lang. Math. Um, yeah, this is a bit hard to read, but this guy, Tom Hull, is a real advocate of um, you know, origami and math, um, saying it connects to many, many subjects. It's not just recreational maths. And if you know about Euclid and the geometry of Euclid that we use and, uh, and it's taught in schools, well, actually origami or folding is more powerful than Euclidean geometry. With Euclid, you cannot divide an angle into three equal angles. With origami, you can. Another kind of you know, classic Euclid problems you can solve with origami that you cannot solve with Euclidean geometry. It's more powerful. Um, and finally, this is our program. We run a program here in Israel, my wife and I, where we teach origami in the maths class <clears throat> called origometria, in the geometry class. In, um, so we have every week 150,000 children study this. Um, and it runs with animations on um, the online. So there are 200 lessons. The children learn their geometry by folding origami. It's incredibly successful, really, really successful, not because of who we are, we think, but because it's just origami. The kids adore origami and they learn geometry by the back door. Very successful program um, that's growing fast especially through lockdown because it's online. Um, and finally, I think, yeah, this is a nice quote from Michael Schall, whose name I've just spelt wrong, um, because you can do it anywhere, anytime, and anybody can do it. It's not something you need to be a master of to enjoy or have a big, big studio, lots of equipment, lots of money. You just need a piece of paper. So um, that's the end. And oh, oh dear, I shouldn't show you that. Um, so um okay i'll stop sharing and here i am again um so lena or somebody does anybody have any questions in the last five or ten minutes yes we had one question actually uh from tammy she needed to leave earlier but um she was wondering whether 
Um, there's any specific type of paper that you recommend for origami? No, really, any paper that can hold a crease. When you, you know, fold the paper, any paper that will hold a crease. So a paper towel or Kleenex is maybe not very good, but even very heavy paper, you can wet it and then it will fold. And when it dries, it dries rigid you know, into the folded shape. So even heavy watercolor paper, aquarelle paper, you can fold with water. But yeah, um, you know, just cheap paper. You don't need to get some special paper from Tibet, you know, to do origami with. Any paper is good, basic paper, but not, you know, paper towels and soft, you know, tissue paper is no good. Okay, brilliant. There was one comment in the chat earlier that, um... Menina's uh, origami uh, didn't look as yours. And mine actually doesn't look as yours. Yours looked so rigid, so... Um... Show me what you did there. Oh no. <laughs> I'm seating the light. Yeah, uh, you didn't turn over, that's why. I did turn over once. Did you? Because everything looks like a valley. From here, everything looks to be a valley. From Now everything looks to be a mountain. So all your uh, parallels need uh -huh. to be valleys, but the X's need to be mountains, the opposite fold. And then everything will go into shape. Probably can't. Yeah, see. yours looks brilliant. Yours looks amazing. Because I made mountains and valleys. Um, you know, the contour yeah, I... that gives you the shape. There's all, well, I did say there's always somebody doesn't turn over. So. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't put me on the spot here. Okay, this is recorded. <laughs> um, I will redo it. I will definitely rewatch the recording and I will get a little bit more creative with my the color of my paper because this is a little bit boring. I want to, of course, stick with green because we all wear green today. <laughs> we yeah, already we're all wearing it. green. Yeah, take your time as well. Don't rush it because I was teaching. Pardon me. I was teaching a little fast. Right. So, um, That's my excuse just, now, Paul. Take your time. Thanks. Enjoy it. Perfect. So a glass of wine, box of chocolates, or whatever, you know. Perfect. I will I will remember that, of course. And um, Svea raised her hand, and I know we're at the top of yeah. the hour. Um, yeah, I just noticed that I'm that we are at the top of the hour, but and I cannot show my video unfortunately. But I wanted to show mine, and I tried the because I had an idea what to do for the challenge, <laughs> and I wanted to quickly do another one. And in another one, I had the same as Lena just had. Um, I. You didn't turn over. No, I didn't turn over, but I can't. Me too. Find, <laughs> I couldn't Me too. find. I, I couldn't find. Um, but it's really good that you asked that question, uh, Lena, because my first one looked very good. Perfect. So I'm wow. I'm really convinced about it, and I wanted to do another one, and then I had the same, and I was like, ah. No, actually, so, that's okay. Um, uh, put the X's to be mountains. Do the popping. Don't forget to pop. You have to pop all those junctions. Yeah, but I, I think I have tried to fold now about both sides. Again. We're short of time, so please yeah. play the video. Again. I, I will definitely do this. But I wanted to share. Thanks, Lena, uh, for, for showing this. And um, yeah, everyone turn around the paper. And thanks very much, Paul. It was really, really interesting. Thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Us too, Paul. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, we're at the top of the hour, back to a little over. Thank you, everyone, for joining our session, uh, our Coffee Corner Meetup. We're back with our Coffee Corner Meetups. And um, I will, of course, follow up in the blog post um, in the SAP community with that recording. So everyone remember turning around valleys and mountains. I will remember that. Thank you, popping. Paul. Pop, 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 pop. And popping, popping. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, Thank I mean, you. if you get some nice results, Lena, please send them to me if you can share them. I will follow up with you, definitely. Thank you. Good, good. I'd like thank to you. Okay. So thank you, Lena. Thank you, everybody. And Thanks, good everyone. Challenge. Enjoy your folding. I hope it wasn't too much of a run through, but play the video, relax, enjoy it, and then you'll understand. Practice. It's just practice. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Take care.